What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Rustic Anchor Woodworks channel. On this episode, I'm going to show you the general process I use to build this entertainment center credenza. So on this project, I'm using a combination of three-quarter and quarter-inch plywood and three-quarter inch poplar. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out all the pieces I need for my face frame, all my styles and rails. So I'm going to build out my face frame first, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut out my three quarter inch plywood, cut some dados out and put that box together. So you can see here, after I cut out all my stock, I'm just going to lay it out and mark all the spots that I'm going to drill out for putting uh, dowel pins in. So I like to use dowel pins. I don't have one of those nice fancy Festool dominoes, but <laughs> I would love to have one. It's just uh, I got that Amazon special $40 uh, dowel pin jig and it's been working phenomenal for me. All right, so I did off screen put that face frame together and I had it all clamped up. And what I'm doing here is I cut to height and width the three quarter inch sides, top and bottom that I'm going to be using for this cabinet box. So here I marked out where the bottom of the face frame, the center shelf is gonna go. And I marked one side of the back of each side. I know I said a lot of sides back, but it'll make sense in a second. You need dados to put your shelves in and you need a quarter inch rabbit on the back to inset your quarter inch backing. So it'll all come together. So here we go. I had measured out and I marked the sides and I am just running these sides through my table saw in order to fit the shelving in. Now you can set up a router and a jig to accomplish the same task, but uh, I find just using a table saw is a lot easier. Now here I am installing a sacrificial piece to my fence and I set my dado up to, a quart to cut a quarter inch deep and by a quarter inch wide. And that is where the backing will go on this credenza. So I'm running both sides. Now here I am cutting the bottom shelf and bottom of the credenza. So you can see I have my face frame and my sides, my shelves roughly put together. To Since I'm using plywood, I'm getting this edge banding and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it to that middle shelf because I don't wanna show that ugly edge of the plywood, so I wanna hide it. So if you put this edge banding, when you put it all together, it looks like a solid piece of wood. All right, once the glue has cooled down and dried, I'm, go, I'm gonna go ahead and get some sandpaper and just knock the edges down because it does, uh, it is a little bit proud on the top and bottom. So here I am assembling my cabinet box. So I go ahead and put glue in each of the dados and then I'm getting my narrow crown stapler and I'm throwing a couple staplers or staples into the side after I make sure it's all squared up. Now you do need to be careful because Remember, I put that quarter inch drabbit on the back for a backing. And that's why you see me using a little shim to raise that shelving so it's true and flat on uh, the forward leading edges where the face frame will go. Because otherwise, those shelves will drop down a quarter inch and you're not going to put your face frame on flush with the rest of these pieces. So you're going to go ahead and use a nice coat of wood glue, line up, your face frame, and then go ahead using that narrow crown stapler, shoot it in. I like to start on one side, get it lined up, and then transition to the other side because if you shoot one or two staples in one side or one corner, you'll be able to manipulate that face frame a little better instead of going from one side to the other, if that makes sense. So after I get it all shot up with the narrow crown staple, stapler, I'm going to go ahead and use some clamps and clamp that face frame tight against the cabinet box. This is the underside. I'm using some support pieces that I cut out out of 
scrap three quarter inch plywood. So I did that to the very back edge and this center piece. So that way it's just, it's more stable once it's all built up. So as you can see, after those bottom extra supports dried, from the back, I added a cleat or an upright uh, support. And I also added that uh, vertical divider and you can see I'm centering it and then I will just glue it and uh, shoot it in. All right, and here is the foundation of this build. So the top, I am going to be using uh, poplar. I'm not using plywood to build out the top. So I ripped some of these poplar stocks down uh, and I made sure all the edges were jointed nice. And then I lined them up. I put some dowel pins in and I'm going to glue them all together. Now I'm using poplar on top instead of plywood because at the end of the day, plywood is soft, right? So if you put something, it'll dent easy. Um, you know, if something drags across, it's, it's just, it doesn't uphold as well as using a solid piece of wood. And because I'm using uh, real wood and not plywood on top, um, you're going to get a, a way more natural grain pattern, and it's going it's to definitely be more appealing to the eye. Uh, the other part of the build, I'm completely painting it in white, so grain pattern and everything doesn't matter to me. So after that top is glued up and clamped, I am just cutting each side to length and straightening everything out. And, you know, I really do like those, that dowel pin jig I got. Uh, they do, it does keep my boards pretty flush with one another. So uh, it's not a crazy amount of sanding to level everything out. Here, I really wish I had a really nice drum sander. That is on my purchase list, my dream, my, wi my, my wish list one day, right? Like a 1632 Supermax drum sander. I'd love to have it. Um, so here I'm taking some of that quarter inch plywood and I am cutting out the shaker panels for each of the four doors. So I'm going to go jump back onto the top of the build and now that it's all sanded down and it's trued up, I'm just taking a round over bit and I am rounding over the front and left and right side of the top. Here I am cutting down some stock to build out my cabinet doors or my credenza doors I should say. And I'm using this method instead of cutting it on the miter saw because look I got a contractor's grade miter saw and it works well but doing it that way is just much more accurate. So I didn't show in the video because again I'm just this is Kind of a process of how I did this build and I've showed how to build doors in the past but I've built each of the four doors and now I'm using the router to wrap it out the back of the upper portion of the door and I'm going to be putting glass there and uh, I'm just going to be using glazing points to hold the glass in because I do have kids and if they break the glass I don't want to build a new door to replace the glass but if I use glazing points and I can put them in and out easy, you know, if they accidentally break it by throwing something or bump it into it, um, you know, it's an easy fix and I don't have to repair the whole thing. So I am just using a chisel to knock out um, those corners and make them 90 degrees so that way the glass will fit better. So moving back to the cabinet box, this piece of three quarter inch plywood is going to be the very base of this credenza and I'm hiding that it's plywood by taking some poplar ripping it about three quarter inches wide and using a round over bit to have put a round over on it and then I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it in with a 23 gauge pin neller and clamp it so that way it'll give the appearance of hardwood it'll be all capped on all visible edges uh, but it'll still look nice right all right so now I'm gonna do the same things I did to that front piece but to the sides 
I cut out 45 degree angles to give it a nice look instead of uh, cutting them at 90 degree angles so you don't see an edge when you're looking at it. And I'm just going to go ahead and shoot them in and clamp them up. All right, so as you see, this is upside down, right? So what I am countersinking some holes into is the bottom. So I'm countersinking these holes into the bottom after I've, I've lined this bottom to the, the box. And I'm just going to run some uh, these screws into the sides, front, and back of the cabinet box. And it's going to hold it securely onto the box. All right, now it's back right side up. So you can see where I put that round over piece of poplar on to the plywood. Um, and I chose this really fancy uh, molding and I'm just going to do some 45 degree miters and make this thing pretty, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this molding on the bottom and top portion of this build so it'll have a mirrored image of itself. And again, I'm just using my 23 gauge pin nailer. Now I'm using these little spring clamps um, I bought them recently. I've used them a handful of times and they are just awesome. They really do close up those miter gaps if you have any or just it, it holds them tight, you know, while it's drying. So here I am adding the feet on to the bottom of this credenza. So I had previously drilled out the correct size hole. I tend to put um, that hardware on to the bolt of these feet. Put some glue and then screw it in because I have a lot of leverage instead of using a screwdriver to drive those in. So I'm at about the 90% mark at this point. The molding's done, the doors are hung, and now I'm just going to spruce it up a little bit. So my wife found these wooden onlays from Amazon and she's like, hey, do you think we can incorporate this somehow? And I'm like, I got you. Don't worry. So here we go. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to take those doors off, lay them flat, align everything, gl and glue them on. And just put some weight on top of those onlays. I'm not going to use pin nails or anything, obviously, because they'll shoot right through the back. But uh, the glue will hold them after it dries. So after I did the onlays, I set up my little paint booth in the garage. I sprayed a couple coats of that credenza and then my wife stained and clear coated the top of it. So here I am aligning the top to the molding so it is even left right and flush on the back and then I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And I showed you guys in the past how I've been attaching these tops. I've been using a wooden biscuit joiner to cut those slots and then I've been attaching the top to the cabinet using these Z fasteners. And that's gonna allow for the natural wood movement of the top. So after I wrap up installing all these little Z fasteners and carrying it into the living room, here it is, it's all wrapped up. This was a really fun build and it was nice to incorporate a lot of these design elements like the molding, the feet, um, glass into it. Uh, it was just a really satisfying build, right? Because me and my wife came together and like, hey, this is what we want. We kind of want to incorporate this. And uh, I think it turned out awesome. So if you stuck it out to the end of the video and you found it pretty useful, 
please hit that like and subscribe button because it really helps this channel grow. So until next time, thanks for checking us out.